Guys, here in this video, we are going to get answer to many such questions. For example, you would like to assign role to a business analyst. How will you do in Automation Hub? If you would like to assign a role to program manager, how will you do it? There's a process owner from business side. You would like to give him access to Automation Hub. How will you do it? Assign role to a system admin. How will you do it? You would like to give access to some employee of the business who will submit an idea. How will you give it? Right? All these questions I'm going to answer in this video. So let's get started. Now let's understand. Let's think I would like to give access to an employee of the company who would like to submit an idea. For that, you should be having admin access, system admin access. So a person who has system admin access, he should go here. Okay. And here there is something called manage access and click on assign roles. And here you would have an option called add user, pretty simple. And here you type the email address of the person who needs the access. And in this role, you have all these options. For example, you would like to add him as a system admin. You can do it. You would like to add someone as a RPA sponsor. So who should be added as a RPA sponsor? Generally the process owners. Okay. For them, you would be adding them as a RPA sponsor. Then program manager. If you have a program manager, then give him this access, right? If you would like to add someone, uh, a standard user, like uh, the employee who would be submitting the idea. So give this a standard user. Similarly, you have business reviewer, citizen developer, power user. So all these rules or the, uh, you know, role you can assign to this email address that you're going to fill it here. Email address, first name, these are mandatory fields. So once you fill them out and then provide the appropriate role. Clear? Now, all this question we had, how to provide an access to business analyst. So which access will you provide for business analyst? Do you know? There is access called authorized user. So this is for the business analyst. Now, next question uh, for program manager, which role should I give? Here is the role program manager. Now, there's another question for process owner, which one I should give? So there is something called RPS sponsor. For system admin, which one you should give? This one. So you got the answer pretty clearly. Now, one more important thing you must understand is the definition of all these roles. And you can also create your own custom role. How can you do? Go to roles, manage access, first admin, manage access, roles. Okay. And I can hit on new. And I can create my own custom role. For example, I want to create a specific role for business analyst. Okay. I don't want to go with the default. The default authorized user is the default one as per the automation hub design from UI path. But sometimes, you know, you feel like a person is doing multiple roles and you feel like he is the person who also should be able to view all of this. So you can provide multiple different access depend on the need customize assessment, set up the cost catalog. So all different options I can choose. So this is how you will be creating a custom role. So once this is created, then if you would like to add somebody into that, click on manage action, assign roles, add user and add that role. Okay, so you got it. Now, after, apart from this, there's one more documentation which I would like to show you. Go to UiPath Automation Hub Review. And in this one, there is something called personas and user roles in automation hub. This is the course. Now this one here, you would find all the definitions. If you scroll down, so for example, what is an account owner role means the account owner role is assigned automatically to the first user of the tenant. The very first user of the tenant will get this. Okay. Standard user. The standard user has access to all existing automation to submit new ideas. So any employee you would like to give, right? You would be start going with standard user. If I employ you would like to add and give access, go with standard user. Explore the pipeline of ideas, the explore enterprise community of automation. They can also browse the, right? The gallery of reusable components, manage and download them. Okay. Getting it, submit new ideas. The main thing is they can submit new ideas. Then system admin. So this is the second highest privileged account. One is the account owner who would have access to everything, tenant settings and all that. System admin would have maximum power. RPA sponsor have read-only rights for viewing all the information around the automation idea. 
So you generally give this, they can see the dashboard, they can see the reports. You will give it to process owners, the big guys. Okay. So like that, all these are there. You should go through one by one in case you have a doubt to understand. Now, the next thing you also need to see this one. For example, if you go to manage access and roles, okay, here role, for example, what is this process owner can do? I want to know what the system admin can do. I want to know. So click on this role. This roles you cannot edit. These are all predefined roles by UiPath. So here, if you see all this access has been given, you can manage the users, manage the user roles, manage the categories. So the system admin would have maximum privilege. You can see all the checkboxes are clicked. Only this checkbox is not there. Manage the tenant settings. Now who will have this setting? If you go to account owner, you can see the account owner role has that settings. So those are the differences by highlighting each one of them. You'll be able to see if you assign this role, what are the access that person will gain? Okay, so this must be pretty clear. Now there's also another option here called collaborator role. Collaborator in the sense, once the idea is submitted, there is somebody who would be, you know, contributing to that idea, right? Like a program manager is a collaborator. The business analyst could be a collaborator. The, your solution architect is designing, anybody who's involved and in contributing to the your developer, right? So anybody you, you feel is a collaborator, this is where you have to define your collaborator roles. For example, employee idea submitter, right? A collaborator means who will be in between, right? They will see, okay, have you did this, fill this way or any kind of uh, involvement you generally do. Process owner, project manager is a collaborator, business analyst is a collaborator, right? So different, different collaborator roles are also available here. Okay. And you can also create your own collaborator roles. Getting it? Now, what is this collaborator? I'm also give you a little bit of idea. So for example, I'll go to workspace. This is where all your ideas are submitted, right? This is where you see your idea. Now let me open this up. I clicked on the link and there is an option here called collaborators. Okay. Now in this collaborator, I would like to add somebody. So you click on manage roles and permission. Now I would like to give access to someone else. So add collaborator. And now you can search the name of the person and then you can also select the kind of role that he can gain and you can add him so that he will be able to, he is invited to this idea and he will continue to collaborate. Okay. Collaborate means helping or assisting the idea to move to automation. Clear? So these are the important ones. I hope you would have got a lot of idea around the roles, the importance of the roles. You can creating the custom roles and all of these things that initially we saw, you should have got an answer now. So thank you for watching. Let's move on to our next topic.